Paul Throughout, I have determined that next week is the biggest week in Game Pass history. That's oh, it. okay. Interesting. What do you think about the... What are your thoughts, Call of Duty? What's going on? Like, how do you view what's happening here? So, how- so I have a lot of thoughts, mainly. But, he, but like, if you, if you put it in a nutshell and, like, just, like, cram it into a neutron star... They spent $69 billion, we'll just say, for Call of Duty. Yes, there's other big titles there, but to get Call of Duty into the Xbox universe, into yeah. Game Pass. Okay. That happens Friday, a week from today. Mm-hmm. Now, other things they're doing, here's my conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. In Warzone, for the past three weeks, they have, I believe, intentionally put in the worst playlists the worst groupings possible, like intentionally, because the, the people I play with were like, these are just trash. Like this right. is clearly lowering engagement because I suspect, right. Once they launch this stuff, then they will put in the favorable. And it's like, here's yeah. someone's going to be like, Brad, what does favorable mean? So in Warzone, you can play as by yourself. You can play duos, you can play trios and you can play in quads right now. You can only play in quads. So like yeah, all okay. those other things are gone, which I assume are these, you mean, this is a team you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, how a, big is your team to drop two, in? One, two, three and three, four and four. Yeah. It's good. One, two, three or four. And so they've taken away so many options that the only ones that are left that are forcing people into rooms that they don't want to be in, which makes yeah. them unhappy, which makes them not play Call of Duty until they bring them back, which will then boost those numbers up in a specific time frame that will help somebody hit a KPI with the related to the release of this <laughs> game. That's so cynical. It has to be true. Oh, it's, it's, you know? yeah, it makes complete yeah. sense. That's funny. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. And what about like just mainline Call of Duty? Are you going to look at this at all? Like, do you care about the, oh, I'll play the multiplayer player? for sure. But the, the story, no. Yeah. Nope. I, if I play it at all, it might literally just be the story. Yes. Um, because I'm po- just trying to, I have played the multiplayer, I think, of every Call of Duty game on planet Earth. And if you walked into my house and said, I'm killing you and your family if you can't tell me the protagonist in one of these games, I would just be like, just shoot me. Like, I do not yeah, resonate I, with I, the stories oh, at all. 100%. I mean, 100%. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to remember where I left. I, I, I think it was Modern Warfare 3, the new version, when it first... This must have been pandemic time frame because I... I played through to some part where you're like hiding under a bed as a child. And it's like, how is this a call of duty game? And I kind of gave up on it. And then the, I think, I think the pandemic happened and I finally went back. I actually finished that game. I think that might be it. So I don't think I ever did modern warfare two and then cold war, or whatever that was black ops, cold war. If there even is a story, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. The only thing I remember about the last campaign, which I played the last game because remember they used to release the campaign like a week early. Mm-hmm. That's the last time I would, would play because it was whatever. Yep. The only thing I remember is at the very end of the campaign, a guy dies. And that describes literally every Call of Duty I was going to say, that's uh, the end of most Call of Duty games. Um, <clears throat> whether it's a good guy or a bad guy uh, for dramatic purposes. I just remember some yeah, guy died. Like I, was whatever. And there was a bomb. Yeah. I, I uh, Boy. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to get back into Call of Duty multiplayer. I'm. I'm just not. But, and that's just like a mental You've health changed. thing, I think, for me, because, you know, when you're really good at something that's really toxic, <laughs> it's oh, kind God, of a yeah. bad combination, you know, but uh, I, maybe, I don't know, fuck, I don't know. I, I, one thing I haven't looked at, I haven't really done too much gaming wise on this trip at all. I played a little bit of that Shin, Shinugas, whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> I, I can't remember the really stupid game, but, um, and a little bit of the Doom, one of the Doom games, but I... I don't know. I don't play his games as much as anymore. And that's mm. a, that is just a startling change for me, but it is a reality. I don't know. I'm definitely interested. Some of the, they, there was the, that partner showcase was yesterday. I don't know if yep. you saw that. Some of that's interesting. I, the Alan Wake stuff is actually kind of interesting to me in um, that second game or the game after the Alan Wake I can't think of the name of it. I thought it was going to be a, I thought it was a Resident Evil title as they were showing it. The kind of horror, you know, whatever game that looked kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. I got to think about this. I don't know. I feel like it's not going to be Call of Duty though. 
that's a big one for me. I mean, this is like seriously 15 plus years. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, it's weirder for me not to play Call of Pixels. Duty. So what's that? You've also said you're not buying iPhones and Pixels, so we know how that works. I say a lot of things, Brad. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, honestly, words are cheap. Um, Thankfully, they're all recorded <laughs> and publicly available on YouTube. I know. That's the that's the thing. That's the unfairness of it all, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, you get a lot of like, well, you said, and it's like, yeah, we're just talking. I don't know, man. Like, it's like you know, most people's conversations are not recorded, and um, it's you know, we just we talk. I, you know, I'm not sitting here with like a list of facts. I'm just talking. You know, so mm-hmm. sometimes like you know, you get dates wrong, you get whatever's wrong. You know, it's like you know, I'm, I don't remember everything exactly. So always been your downfall. <laughs> yes. No, but as far as that kind of stuff goes, yeah. you know, yeah, I try to I, look, I mean, every cycle of whatever it is, hardware, whether it's computers or phones, you know, you kind of, you know, obviously we think about the stuff and I don't know, some, I have relationships with some companies and not with others. So when it's like Apple, like, you know, I have to buy that stuff. So it's like a decision yeah. every time, like the Mac mini, I'm not, I can't do, I'm just not going to buy that. I just bought a brand new iPad, but you know, like I said the other day, if this thing had come out three, five months ago, that would probably be the one I would be using. And that w- that's interesting because it has a cascading effect. Like there's a, that color Kindle just came out, which I'm super interested in and did pre-order. And if I had bought an iPad mini right before that thing came out, it's like, well, now what? Like, do you actually buy one of those too? Like, so, you know, I don't know. These it, it, It's case by case basis. I don't really have a plan, I guess something that's inside baseball to start off at least my team and what we're doing with multiplicity for yeah. so i might butcher some of these minute details but you'll get the idea so mm-hmm. multiplicity for we have a feature called seamless display it allows you to take a secondary device and make it a display mm-hmm. so you can whatever it becomes a display mm-hmm. so that works perfectly fine on x86 x64 or whatever intel amb based devices okay using it on an ARM-based device, we've run into a little problem. But to, before you go on, just clarify, because there's two sides to this, right? Yep. So are you using the ARM device as the display, or are you going it's from the ARM device the to The it? appropriate question. So yeah. for those who don't use multiplicity, which I'm assuming is most people here, although you shouldn't, I'm just kidding. Uh, you have to designate a device as a primary. Like okay. in the app, you have to say, this is the primary device. And then the, the other device, you have to say, this is a secondary device. So that yep. way it knows which device is controlling which. Mm-hmm. If the x86 device or classic Windows or whatever you want to call it is set as the primary, it works perfectly fine where the ARM device is the secondary and you okay. can do all that stuff. Yep. However, if you want to set the ARM device as the primary and use the secondary device as x86, there's a mm-hmm. there's a pretty challenging problem we're going to have to solve, which we can solve it, but whatever. So... How do you, clar- I mean, how do you, or even if you can, I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you describe that problem? Like, it's kind so of, a, it's, that's, here's, you know, here's the problem. So yeah. we wrote our own driver, which is yeah. gut-wrenching within itself. <laughs> yeah. But we wrote our own video driver to do this. Mm-hmm. On Windows, we can self-sign it. Oh. On ARM, we yep. have to go through WHQL mm-hmm. with Microsoft to do How's this. that process? I, we, <laughs> Would you say that they respond quickly? Um, <laughs> yeah. So here, here's the inside. The inside baseball is unless we find a way around this, there will be a little star added to that feature where you can use every other feature of Multiplicity 4 works on ARM and everything else. It's just using the ARM as a primary and trying to use an x86 as a secondary that cannot so, be accomplished that's fascinating it, it it this to me that you know without any real understanding of it is uh, the arm version of windows is in many ways more device-like mobile mm-hmm. device-like and then there's this requirement which which in the end is probably mostly about quality and reliability and security you know whatever but um so good for the end user technically but yeah, making your life more difficult. Oh, it can make my life real difficult because we don't know. And this is something I don't know. And I'll probably learn here in the near future. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can just install drivers on ARM. It might have to come through Windows Update. Yep. That's interesting. And I don't know. I don't I don't know the yeah. answer to that question that I just posed. But uh, 
That's the yep. way the documentation makes it read. I, which, whew, I mean, I don't think I've ever installed a driver, <laughs> you know, one arm. Like, I'm just trying to, I, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing to think about, but it I, is I, in, outside of Windows Update, right? Like, um, I'm pretty sure I haven't. I, I, without knowing, you know, maybe I'm trying to think of something like a OBS type solution, screen court, something, something, maybe, but I don't think. That's even native on ARM. I don't even know. Hmm. Yeah. So these are like the little gotchas when people say, yeah. just bring your stuff to ARM. It's super easy these days. It's like, it is. But well, it it's easy isn't. for apps. Yeah. But you're describing a lower level issue. That's, yeah, that's interesting. So I think we'll huh. be fine for a while because primarily, at least our understanding of how most people will use this feature is with a desktop. And there are no ARM desktops. Yeah, there's not even dev kits, apparently, because they canceled those. <laughs> so we... By the way, a lot of misplaced yeah. anger there. Um, the the problem there is not Qualcomm, right? It's this two-bit third yeah. party they went with, um, whatever that company was called, is called. Uh, so, yeah. but And look, there were lots of warning signs this year, right? <laughs> I mean, there's something wrong. I mean, I thought we were going to get... Dev kit systems come in the mail with like the um, HDMI port glued over or whatever. Um, anyway, that was a fiasco. That's too bad. All right. Anyway, so that kind of, we realized that yesterday, which you'd think, why didn't you realize that earlier, Brad? It's because like we're, we're, it's whatever. <clears throat> yeah. I'm curious about this now. I, yeah. Right <laughs> Trust drivers me, I am arm. too. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, this is the guy that's got to figure it out. I mean, our development right. team's like, this right. isn't my problem. <laughs> like, you got to tell me what I got to do. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, that's fair. Uh, but it's like, how? It's be, well, I mean, I, okay. I, it seems like if you could go through official channels to make that work, the scenario is someone installs this on a Windows and ARM device, and it just does download that driver from mm -hmm. Windows Update, which sounds fine. I mean, it, without knowing the process, one would have to go through, like, on your side. Right. And then, so I don't even want to approach this until mm. we are sure that the driver that we're using that we've written is mature enough to pass <clears> all of their <throat> stuff. Because it's weird, too, because it's a video driver, but it's a virtual video driver. It's not yep. a, you know, it's not plugging in a monitor driver sort of thing. Yep. Well, I eagerly follow this uh, <laughs> since I plan to use it with Windows on ARM. Um, as you were talking about, like, uh, primary, secondary, whatever. I was like, hmm, okay, that might change how I use this. But yeah. hmm, it's interesting. It just depends on how you want to use it. Every KVM mode, seamless works fine. It's just mm -hmm. the, it's because it's yeah. the video driver. That's the only. This is, I mean, like this, he, me being here is a good example, but also me traveling is another example um, where I would want to use a second computer as a display, absolutely. It's, it, you know, you can do this in Windows natively, but it's a nightmare and, um, you know, it's not great either, but uh, but I often, I, I don't travel with a second display, but I often travel with a second laptop. So mm -hmm. it's obviously like, why couldn't I use that? Like I bought a display here, which I, I don't know. I would be just as happy with a big laptop as yeah. a secondary display, honestly, so. Yeah, one of the interesting scenarios that somebody's brought up, and we're going to try to make it work. I probably shouldn't even say this, but whatever, we're going to try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is people who use have a Surface Pro, and they want to use yeah. the still use the inking ability <clears throat> on that secondary display. Right now, we initially yeah. block that for various reasons yeah. because I mean, for obvious reasons. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. We just completely strip out that mm -hmm. input, um, but we think we can isolate just pen input. Interesting. So Which, it's still, yeah. It's almost yeah, like yeah. a Wacom tablet sort of experience then at well, that like point. Like you would use an iPad with a Mac and but be able to touch, touch or draw on the screen. Yep. The, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then so you could you could have it as one note and you're just drawing or writing or whatever and it's, it's in your desktop experience. It's a little yeah. bit more, the latency could also potentially maybe be concerning, but we haven't crossed that road yet. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyways. Well, have fun. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's complicated stuff. Anyways, Game Pass, something, something. Something, something.